all the world's a stage and all the men and women, mainly players, they have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. At first the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms and then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honour, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round belly, with good cape and lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut. Full of wise saws and model in modern instances, and so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his youthful hose well saved and a world too wide. For his shrunk, shrank, and his big manly voice, turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all that ends the strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. Welcome to St George's Virtual Drama Extravaganza. We've got some fantastic performances from girls who've been really imaginative and creative about how they can submit their entries for the extravaganza. Um, and I really appreciate all the girls that have taken part. I'd like to say a big thank you to Miss Little, who's put the video together, and Miss Johnson for helping to coordinate the performances this evening. I hope you enjoy all the performances, and I look forward to seeing you back at St George's in the near future. Come on, Violet. Time to get a move on. We've got to go and deliver these papers. Go away. You said you'd go with me. Come on, afterwards I can show you these great new comics I got. It's Saturday. You do the route. I'm asleep. Come on. I don't want to go alone. Your just story still has me a bit freaked. Why would you let your brother scare you? He's just a big bully. Besides, ghosts don't exist. may have gotten to you too. Help me. Ah! ah! Did you see? Was that? What was that? What's that? It's a missing persons case. It's my dad's. This is Simon Stillwater's file. My dad investigated his disappearance, but never solved the case. Do you think that was Simon Stillwater in the mirror? What? Simon Stillwater's ghost was in your room? I think so. And I think he wants us to investigate his disappearance. Are you crazy? Do you know the legends about Emily Van Wart? Do you know what they say about the Stillwater estate? Don't you see? The estate is where the clues will be. And if we can solve Simon Stillwater's disappearance, we could close my dad's case. But remember Roger's story. Emily Keck's girls. Girls our age. Stop being a wimp. May I suggest, if we do go, we take a boy as a backup. A boy for backup? Why? Emily collects girls, remember? Maybe Samuel? Samuel? No. He's always busy now that he volunteers at the library. Besides, if he knew what we were doing, he would never let us investigate. What about Logan then? He's brave, strong, and he's not afraid of anything. Logan Roberts. Logan, you know, he's obsessed with zombies and stuff. Apparently he's really knowledgeable and good at investigating. Okay, we'll ask him after we finish the route. Now come on.
To create the perfect talent show contestant, you will need one contestant. I just love singing. Singing's it's just been my life. I mean, I've been, I've been singing since I was about three days old. For optimum results, the contestant should have a heartbreaking story. Yeah, it's, um, it's really, really hard. Sorry. <laughs> Put myself up when you get emotional about this. Just last year, Shelley's favourite t-shirt shrunk in the wash. It's been a long journey, an upsetting journey. I brought it with me. That's all I've got left. I just didn't think I'd be here without... Sorry. Is that okay? And finally, at the audition, you will need one adequately dramatic family member. And there you have it. The perfect talent show contestant. This week, we're in the beautiful county of Shropshire. And here in Shropshire, Biscuits are made with all local ingredients, made and decorated entirely with local produce. Let's go and have a look. Lovely to meet you. Thanks so much for having us. And engage with the viewers. So what is it that you're doing right now? Do you not know? I'm just um, decorating the biscuits with chocolate. It just looks so interesting. It really doesn't. But I'm, I'm intrigued, tell me more. I mean, this must take a lot of concentration. Yeah. Please tell me she doesn't want to go. It just looks so fun. I'm just going to ignore that. Does it? Could I have a go? No, you may not. I don't really want to go. Yes, of course. Oh, I think I've messed it up. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're doing really well. <laughs> and... <sighs> oh, it's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> and now I look like an idiot in front of the viewers. Today, I struggled. It was a tough go. Everything was a battle. Working hard, getting nowhere. What a disaster. Nothing came easy. But I accept it when it happens. I allow the torture to happen. Because I know that it's going to be a battle to the death. And the only thing I can do is raise my hands up and start throwing punches. I never back down from the challenge. It's not easy being good, is it? You think it is? Most people think success is based on luck. But I don't believe in luck. Not if you really want to be something. Not if you really want to do something worthwhile. Luck is the aftermath of action. Anybody who's good at what they do is good because they work their head off. Yeah, you can have natural talent. But even with talent, you need to earn the respect of that talent and work your tail off. Today was a miserable day for me. Everything kept going wrong. Each attempt I made, nothing led to anything substantial. A bunch of weak, tired and boring empty work. But then I realised. I remembered. Not every day is going to be a win day. And those bad days are actually the best days. Because when I find myself working harder at that thing, it raises my level up and I refuse to lose. 
I refuse to go one single day without putting in. And if you are willing to go to the edge of the earth for it, no matter how tired you are, no matter how fed up with yourself you are, a block eventually pushes open and you see enough light to slip yourself through. And there you are, on the other side, finally accepted. This is it, opening night. The moment I've been waiting for, the moment I've been working towards for months. My debut as a performer. I'm about to tread the boards to become a thespian. It may only be a small role, but I'm beginning the journey of my dreams. And who knows, one day I could be playing the lead. Any minute now. Oh, wait for my cue line, wait for it. Oh, I need the toilet. Is there time? No, of course there isn't. Just ignore it. It's only first night nerves. Oh, here it comes. Cue line entrance. Oh no. I've gone blank. What's my first line? My first line! Can't be happening. Just say something. Anything. Anything at all from the scene. As long as I say something, it will be alright. Get things moving. Give the other actors something to work with. They're all staring at me. Don't they realise that's just going to make it worse? Oh, my head's starting to swim. Oh no, I might faint. Breathe. Something will come in a minute. You just need to give it time. Hey, what is happening? They're carrying on without me. They've skipped my lines and they're carrying on. How dare they? They didn't even give me a chance. Don't they realise this is my big moment? I have to take back control of this situation. All I have to do is go and have a quick look at my script. I left it just over there in the wings. All I have to do is casually move over to... Hey, who turned the lights out? You mean blackout? It's all over. But I didn't even... Hang on a second. The audience are clapping. They want to show their appreciation. Well, I better give them what they want. It would be rude not to. This scene is taken from Why Is John Lennon Wearing a Skirt by Claire Dowie. And don't worry, I've got shorts on underneath. This was me at 14. I like being 14. 14 was a great age to be. Could either be really grown up or really childish, depending on what mood I was in. And I was very moody. Well, according to my mum. You're so moody you are. Well, what do you expect, Mum? I'm only 14. It's my hormones. Whatever they are. Look at me, dressed like this. Compulsory. School rule. And it's compensations, though. Like this tie, for instance. Love this tie. I want mine like this. Sort of roguish cover, but dishevelled look. Very John Lennon, I thought. 
So quite like the top half of me. Unfortunately, the bottom half. Oh, I hate it. Five days a week for six years, I had to wear this thing. And five days a week for six years, I want to know why, what for, what was the point? A piece of material hanging round my waist. I mean, what could you do with it? Could you play football? Yes, but you had to watch your knickers. Could you dive off a desk on somebody's back, rolling on the floor, tasseling? Yes, but you had to watch your knickers. Could you slump in a chair, bored and rebellious like Johnny's Jane? Yes, but you had to watch your knickers. You always had to watch your knickers because you've got the boys watching your knickers for you. Woo! The knicker factor, I called it. Why can we wear trousers like the boys? To go for us in a lot of fighting to catch a glimpse of the boys' knickers. Two on the arms, one on the feet, and one to pull down the trousers. And it was a lot more fun. <laughs> Mind if they're being shorts. In fact, did that once in needlework. work. Instead of making it up in it, so it straight up the middle. Felt good. Felt really clever. But I got told to stop it. Got told to unpick it. Got told you're ruining your skirt. I know. That's the point. Hated it. The only conclusion I came up with is that the school made it compulsory, a school rule, just to get at me. Just to irritate me. And of course I thought I was right, because I was 14. And at 14, I knew everything. Well, according to my mum. You think you know everything, don't you? Yes, mum, I do. Unfortunately, as the term progressed, I realised I knew nothing. Hello, Regina, Gretchen, is anyone back yet? Why can't I see myself? Oh. Yes, I'm back you, Karen. I can see through your eyes and you spelt your name wrong. Apparently you're Kieran now. Oh, Gretchen. Hi. Hi. Okay, so before Regina comes back, I need to tell you a secret. Regina dyes her hair blonde. Her natural colour is dark blonde. But she, but I never told anyone because I'm such a good friend. Wait. Regina? What are you talking about? Oh. Gretchen told me that you... That you're uh, um, an amazing friend. Right. Anyway, I think Aaron has been on house party with Katie. I don't know for sure, but... He has. Katie told me the other day, but she told me not to tell anyone. I knew it! They were always in a locked room at the exact same time. What could they be talking about? Maybe they're doing maths together. Don't be stupid, Karen. Why would they be doing math together? Oh, I can't believe she's stealing my boyfriend. Katie really likes Aaron. She told me herself, but she said not to tell you. I'll just make sure that he doesn't like her. Where is Katie anyway? I said we weren't having a call today. Why? Because I wanted to talk about her, of course. Oh, I can't believe she's taking Aaron from me. Actually, no, I can believe it. She's such a backstabber. I gave her a chance to be popular and she took the one person I actually like at that stupid school. Hey, what about us? Yeah. Oh, shut up. Well, what are we going to do today besides listening to Regina's problems? Isn't that all we always do? No, Mum, you cannot say hello. No, I'm not hungry. Just go away. Oh, 
god she's so annoying wait why is the beach there why am i on the beach what when it's not there but why is it there wait what Karen, don't be so stupid it's like when you thought a tank top was a t-shirt with a picture of a tank on it sorry when was that i don't remember that why don't i remember that i don't know oh it was when me and regina went shopping without you because regina does not like your fashion sense karen excuse me i have a better fashion sense than karen remember when karen wore a green fluorescent vest to school with socks and sandals. What's wrong with socks and sandals? Oh, I'm hungry. I'm getting cheese fries. Don't go anywhere. Karen, your microphone's off. I can't hear you. Karen! Ugh. What? Can you do me no greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore, O oh me, what news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me? O oh, the gods forbid, in earnest shall I say. O oh, me! You juggler, you cranker bosom, you thief of love. What, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine I faith. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you... Puppet? Why so? Hey, that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. Are you grown so high in his esteem, because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, though painted maple, spiel, how low am I? I am not yet so low. But that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. Oh, good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels. Never wronged you. Save that. In love unto Demetrius. I told him of your stealth unto the wood. He followed you. For love, I followed him. Ah, but he has chewed me hence and threaten me, to strike me, spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And now, so you will let me quiet go. To Athens will I bear my folly back, and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Why get you gone? Who is it that hinders you? The foolish hearts that I leave here behind. What? With Lysander? Uh, with Demetrius. Oh, when she is angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when we went to school. And though she but little, she is fierce. Little again? Nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Let me come to her. I will not trust you. I no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray, but my legs are longer, though to run away. Everything is ready. Hello everyone, this is Queen Elizabeth and this is 
BBC News. <sighs> we are very glad to inform you that I am filming in my castle. <sighs> anyway, this was useless information. The real news are schools are reopening on the 3rd of June 2020. So nice. <sighs> Adults will be going to work on the 4th of July 2020. The reason is me and my cat Frederick were so upset and depressed. The reason is we haven't been eating KFC for so long. It's been 72 days. Freddy haven't even tasted fries yet, which is so depressing and humiliating. We would have ordered McDonald's, but they only have chicken nuggets there. Freddy doesn't like it. Anyway, that's why all the restaurants are reopening. <sighs> so glad. <clears throat> My cat is very, very, very sensitive. And that's why he has to go. <sighs> I've been holding you here for two hours and trying to film this live, so you better go. <sighs> anyway, so what I was talking about. <sighs> what about the Prime Minister? Well, I kicked out Boris Johnson. He was acting very strange and he didn't want to close schools. So it was very humiliating for me. I was tired anyway. So I killed him. What else could I do? He's old anyway. I'm young. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, thank you. I hope this was very useful. That's the end of the live. Thank you very much. Stay safe from COVID-19. What a shame. A main part? Are you sure you want it with Rayla? Okay, well, I'll ask, but I think you're making a big mistake. Hang on, she's calling me. I'll call you back. You can have this time to think about such a rash decision. Rayla, dear, how are you? Oh, come off it. Don't give me that pathetic attitude. What's wrong? You know what's wrong, Greg. I want to work. I need to work. I should be the best and it's your job to help me. I hired you to make me the best, but all you really do is put me in set commercials. Well, calm down. Don't get your panties in a twist. Calm down. I'll show you calm. Well, my dear. To be a successful actor, you need to be calm. And frankly, you're the opposite. Don't give me that fool. How dare you talk to me in such an unprofessional manner. I pay you to work, so you shouldn't talk to me like that. Well, to be honest, dear, I was going to tell you some good news. But since you're giving me such attitude, perhaps I'll just tell them that you're not interested in being the main part. What? Did you just say? Well, I received a call today, and as it turns out, there's a call director who wants to cast you in something. But, since you're guessing so crazy, I guess I'll just have to decline. Greg, tell me what it's for, right now. No, I won't, until you calm down and apologise for such behaviour. Apologise? Apologise? What could I possibly have to apologise for? Oh, don't be so innocent. You know what you're doing. What am I doing? What are you doing? Because it's certainly not your job. Roma, dear, will you just listen, me, listen to me? I need you to... Well, if you want to keep your job, then I suggest you start listening to me. Not 
The other way around. Fine. What is it now? Is my work as an actress going to consist of literally being a soap star? I get five different soap brands sending me free boxes of their products each month. I have enough soap to cleanse all of Hollywood for an entire year. Well, I think being a soap star will do you good. But unfortunately, it can't cleanse your personality. For you, it will be good for you. I making you money and you're killing my career before it even gets started. What the hell did I do 10 years of theatre for? I can't take this degrading industry anymore. You better do something for me and you better do it fast. I am doing something for you. I got you the main part, didn't I? Now, it's time for you to do something for me. And just trust me. Trust you after everything that just happened? I think that my talent is too good for this circus act. I'll take the high road and leave, thank you very much. Stupid girl. She thinks she's so special, when really, she's just nothing but a spoiled, good-for-nothing brat who thinks the world revolves around her. Doesn't she realise she has? She doesn't have any talent? If it wasn't for that call just now, I think that she had no idea how to act. She should have just acted well bit less dramatic and maybe she could have had that role but i guess now she's just an unemployed unimportant sorry little girl hi and welcome to our mobile app can i take your order we'll have it ready at the drive through um hi i'd like a regular coffee please do you mean a medio excuse me we don't have regulars. Well, what do you have? We have petite, medium, and grande. Well, which one is small? We don't have small. No, I understand that. But which one is the smallest? Our petite. Which is your small? Yes. So then your medium is like medium? Yes. Well, why don't you just call it that? I don't know, sir. I don't name the coffees. Would you like a complaint card so you can place a complaint? No, I just don't understand. I understand. So what size would you like? A medium, I guess. And what blend? I'm sorry? And what blend would you like? Oh, just plain? No, not blend as in blend, blend as in what blend, as in what type? Just regular coffee. We don't have regular, sir. Yes, I get that. So what type of coffee would you like? The type made of beans. All our coffee is made of beans, sir. Well then, the type that I can drink. You can drink all our coffees. I just can't order them. There's no need to be rude. Sorry, I don't mean to be. It's just that I have a meeting in a few minutes and I'd like to get my coffee before I'm too old to enjoy it. Maybe we start again. Why don't you tell me what kind of coffees you have and I'll pick one. We have Sutra, Caramel and our specialty blend. Nothing that's just plain old coffee? Oh no, all our coffees are unique flavour experiences. Well, what if I don't want a unique experience? What if I just want a plain cup of coffee? Would you like a complaint card so you can register a complaint? No, I just want a cup of coffee. Well, we have that. Great, then that's what I would like, a plain cup of coffee. How about our Colombian, if simple yet rich, bounty? Fine, I'll just take a cup of your regular old Colombian.